Karen abuses me during my break and I might get fired for it. So I brought this all the way to the CEO. Am I the a-hole? It's 2 p.m. today and I'm starving. I am just coming back from the fast food joint down the street and I'm walking towards the break room with my food in hand hoping to enjoy a quiet, peaceful lunch to re-energize myself so I can continue dealing with the endless waves of snarky customers that my workplace is notorious for attracting. As I'm getting to the door, this blonde woman around her 50s begins to follow me. I can feel her following me. And she begins to do this psst, psst. That's so f***ing annoying. She continues about three times or so, but I ignore her since, you know, I'm not a f***ing dog or anything. After she realizes that I am not going to react to her summons, the conversation goes a little something like this. Woman, um, excuse me. <laughs> me. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I am on break right now, but let me get one of the other employees to help you out. At this point, I begin to reach for my walkie-talkie to call someone to the aisle for help, but she isn't having any of it. Woman. What? I will not be treated like this. I am a valued customer, and I demand to be treated as such. You will provide your service to me right now. And that is that. No questions asked. Me. Ma'am, I would be happy to help you, but my lunch break is only 30 minutes in. I don't give a sh I don't care if you're starving. The customer comes first. Your last dying breath will be said I am the customer. At this point, I didn't even retaliate. I just turned around and ignored her, which I love. That's amazing. Just like, yeah, I'm not dealing with this shit. I walked into the break room with my key and shut the door behind me. She began to angrily pound on it for a few seconds until she finally stopped, presumably because a coworker came to the rescue. I later found out that she complained to the manager, and of course, the manager simply brown-nosed her and told her that I would be dealt with, as an employee should never refuse service to a customer, even if they are on break. This supposedly applies even if I call an employee over the walkie for help. So there's an update. Okay. But is OP the a-hole from walking away from this obvious Karen? My God, no. This poor person is just trying, trying to have 30 minutes of peace. I called corporate to complain that I was basically being reprimanded for following policy and refusing service to a customer during my break. Of course, corporate immediately sided with me and everything seemed like it was going to be fixed and my name would be cleared. But no, of course not. In the world of retail, things aren't always so clear cut. Lo and behold, there's another factor here. The f apparently called corporate herself and basically demanded that I be fired for being rude to her. Now, guys, the thing is, the store has cameras and turns out they investigated. And since the audio is not available, the only thing seen was me walking away from the woman and slamming the break room door behind me. Oh, no. OP, I guess that doesn't look too good. Now, you'd think that's bad enough, right? Wrong. Guess what? I asked a supervisor, who is a longtime buddy of mine, to check the punch-in sheet. It is automatically filled in by the computer, but is editable by management. So I checked it just out of curiosity. And guess what? Someone effing deleted my break time that was logged into the system. Wow. So now, not only am I being accused of refusing service to a customer, but I am also being accused of not clocking out and leaving the premises to get food. Was this a computer error or did the manager really do this on purpose to save his own ass? Or does he simply not like me? We have a long history of run-ins with each other and it's openly well known that he does not like me. I will not lay down and die like a That's right. I will fight until the very end, even right now when it seems that I have no allies. Hey, this is literally Braveheart, like. Oh. Okay, there's another update. So basically two big things happened today and I will try to explain them in as much detail as possible. One, I woke up bright and early and made a call to corporate. My plan was to simply to state that I needed my issue investigated further, even if it seemed like there was no problem on their end. As expected, the person on the other end of the phone told me the same thing they had already told me when I I had first called, but then I said the magic word, subpoena. As soon as I made the calm yet firm threat, the person immediately 
told me to hold on for a second. He got a supervisor on the phone to whom I explained my situation once again, and he assured me that he would see into the matter. Oh, and I also asked for a way to email the president of the company, and I sent an email to him explaining my situation as well. My boy is not giving up. I had another plan. I was going to catch my manager myself red-handed. You know, just in case corporate the goofs. So two, I walk into work and I immediately go into the manager's office. I stand in front of him and the conversation goes like this. Me, I have to speak with you about something really important. Manager, can it wait? I need to finish looking over these documents before 12. Me, no, it can't wait. Supervisor's name told me that my clock in and clock out time from lunch three days ago was not in the log. I know I punched out and in. So what happened? Manager. Huh, weird. I'll look into it for you. All right. Me. Oh, no need. I already called corporate and they said they'd look into it personally. Oh, yeah, buddy. At this point, I had the whitish <laughs> eating grin I have ever had in my life and it felt good. Real f good. The manager audibly good at this point, no doubt. Bricks. Manager, you know, that wasn't really necessary. You could have come to me about this first. Me, oh, I know, but I didn't want to waste your time seeing as you're so busy and all. You have more important things to do than look over documents. At this point, he visibly begins to get annoyed by my attitude and my sarcastic tone, but I'm just enjoying myself way too much. Manager, now listen, tomato underscore ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really liking your tone right now. Me, I apologize. Anyways, I just wanted to give you a heads up in case corporate asks any questions. You know how they are. At this point, some of you might be thinking why I said the last part. Why? Because I had a small suspicion that since he is a recently made manager, three months now, he probably didn't know that the system logs all deletions and re-entries. Sure, you'd be told this if you became manager, but I was trying my luck at this point because A, I don't see who else could have deleted my log times and B, if it was him who deleted them, he obviously didn't know about the fact that the deletions are tracked. So what was my end game? Well, simple. I was hoping that due to this threat about corporate, he would simply go back and add my times back onto the log. And guess what, John? What happened, Sam? He did just that. A couple of minutes after a conversation, he comes to me and tells me, manager, tomato ketchup. I found out what the problem was. There was a glitch in our system and apparently it didn't register your punches, but everything's fixed now. Your log time should be there. Me. Wow. Thanks. I appreciate it. Manager. No problem. But wait a minute. There's more. Just a couple of hours into my shift, I see the manager leaving the store. Angrily slamming the manager's office door on his way out. When I asked my supervisor buddy what had happened, the conversation went like this. Dude, why is he so angry? I don't know. He was with corporate on the phone for a few minutes and he asked me why I told you that the time logs were missing. Hold up. Let me find out. So my supervisor runs out to the front doors to catch up with the manager. They talk for a while outside, after which my manager gets into his car and angrily drives off. Then my supervisor comes back inside, walks up to me and says, dude, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but he's f***. Corp with <laughs> Mike Tyson is a supervisor. <laughs> Corp Co with found Co with found evidence of data tampering in the punching log. Apparently, he deleted your times yesterday and added them back today, this morning, to cover his ass. <laughs> Me. Wow. Supervisor. Yep. So there's that. He will probably get fired, and I will probably keep my job. Peace. Wow. Hey, OP. Just masterful, masterful work. He went against Karen's managers, corporate, like every boss. Yeah, and he just yeah. feeded them a, at every a level. Real Reddit who's who of uh, <laughs> all the usual villains. Yeah. <laughs> and he <laughs> defeated them all. But I would love to hear everyone's like, you know, terrible boss story. I feel Ooh. like there's probably a ton. Everyone's got one. I would love to know what you guys think. Is OP the a-hole for taking this all the way to the top? John, what do you think? Sweet justice is always so delicious. It's just like the Karen didn't get what she wanted. He was able to basically looks like sack the boss, the terrible boss. And when all looked bleak, 
Mm-hmm. Right? Like when he, all hope was lost. He easily could have they could have just chalked it up like, all right, it looks like he was ignoring this lady and you know he didn't log his time, but then it worked out. I'm obsessed with this jogger's gorgeous hair and just want to touch it. Today I made contact, but now they think I'm a stalker. Am I the a-hole? Dude, do they see you running? There might be some similarities. Podcast Jesus? <laughs> Strap in, suckers. Come and revel in my awkwardness. So, for literally years now, this dude has been running around a three square mile in my area. The only reason I've ever noticed him was because of his flowing hair that gracefully blows behind him as he runs (laughs) and the frequency that we saw him outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm taking pics. Now, when he started, he was a little overweight, but dude is so committed that he literally runs in rainstorms wearing trash bags and is Damn. very fit now. Damn. Where's your trash bag, Sam? I know, dude. I, my dad weighed 195 pounds at his peak and now it's my like goal to weigh 200 pounds. My my dad was fucking ripped. Dude, I mean. This is my dad. Absolute beefcake. This is my, look, look, look how, look how freaking ripped he is, dude. And then look at this freaking scrawny boy right here. Freaking tiny, tiny A measly 170. Dude, measly. Measly. Over the years, I would cheer him on privately while inside my car in an attempt to make my kids laugh. It became a thing. It was, there's my dude, or man, I haven't seen my dude in a while. I hope he's okay. Or my sister would say, I saw my dude today. Kind of just an inside joke. But again, even after seeing him all the time while driving, I never actually ran into him in person on my walks. That brings me to the today effed up portion of the post. I decided to go on a different route recently. I look up and through the sunlight in the trees, I see this gorgeous golden mane of hair. I swear they're talking about you, dude. So I think, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Today's the day I meet my dude. He's getting closer now. I feel incredibly stupid. Why the F did this my dude thing even start again? He's getting closer now. He's much taller than I thought and it just throws me off and I let him jog past me. I thought, F, I can't just not say anything, right? And guys, I really wish... I didn't say anything. I really wish I went home, called my sister, and fake fangirled over walking within inches of this mythical man with the hair. But I'm an idiot. (laughs) Well, what did you do, OP? What did you say? So I turn around and yell, Excuse me! My dude! Look at me! He swishes around his marvelous hair, still jogging in place, (laughs) and just looks at me. That's hilarious. He's just like, yeah, yeah. What, like, like what, what's up? I. Oh, another fan? Then I say, we've been watching you for years. <laughs> There's no good way to respond to that. <gasps> what? So he's like, huh? And I say, we've been watching you. Oh, double down. Okay, OP. <gasps> like he couldn't hear me or something. Instead of what he really meant, which is probably what, what the, the F. F. <laughs> yeah. My dude is still jogging like, what? I stammer, oh, I, we've been watching you run. I mean, like me, me and my family, like watching you run for years. You you, you look great. Like way, way to go, dude. I don't know how you uh, respond uh, to that. Uh, like, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I've been watching for years. I, there's probably a lot of that though, where it's like, there's this homeless guy that I see on my run and he's like lost a lot of weight. I think mostly because he probably doesn't have access <laughs> to <laughs> to food. Oh, but, god. <laughs> but he looks great. <laughs> oh my god. And you guys, I then gave him an effing thumbs up. <laughs> like a Zans out soccer mom. So he says to this, uh cool, thanks. And just kind of runs away. At this point, I feel kind of betrayed. Like he's basically a celebrity in my house. And he just says, cool. Um, How dare he? Then it hit me how effing awkward and creepy and effed up what I said and how I said it was. I tell my husband and he's like, wish you weren't so awkward, bud. I tell my kids and they're like, um, wow. Mom. Why would you do that? <sighs> yeah. Wow. Pop another Xanax and forget about yeah, it. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I tell my sister and she cries laughing because of how typical this is for me to be so awkward. I mean, like I literally told a grandma, don't eat the baby the other day at a store while she was nibbling on her grandkids toes playfully. <laughs> what is my problem? <laughs> A good question to ask. <laughs> so funny. Stop! Uh, don't, don't do it! So, 
The main reason I'm even typing this, besides so you freaks that like to cringe at others' idiocracy can read it. That's us. That's us. Is that I appear to be some weird version of CIA, FBI, Illuminati soccer mom to... Soccer mom! She does Xanax. (laughs) That's true. To my dude. He has been nowhere to be found. I have not seen him running around at all, and I feel so bad that I may have possibly kind of weirded him out enough for him to change the entire area he has been running in for years. So, my dude, if you see this, I am so not watching you in any way other than to admire your hair and admire your dedication to fitness. I apologize profusely if I ever see you again. I promise I will not say anything anything. And to that grandma, if you're on Reddit, seriously, you shouldn't eat babies. I am not apologizing for that. (laughs) Um, But there is one update. Today, I told my mom about my previous post and made her read it, made her almost cease to exist from laughing so hard at me. And then she says, yeah, but that guy is pretty weird. And I say, uh, why do you say that? And apparently I am from a family of freakishly awkward individuals. You guys, my dad did the same thing as me. Thanks, dad. You're great. Oh, my God. So he runs into my dude in the store and he was like, oh, hey, I see you running all the time. You're looking great. Keep it up. (laughs) (gasps) Two people. Can you imagine? My dad was a coach. So he's got this weird, proud dad thing going on. My dude just kind of looks at him and says, thanks and slowly walks away the end i think it's pretty funny it's pretty funny it's pretty hilarious i'm I'm pretty into it if only there could be i mean it's still kind of the question i guess is like is it possible to have any explanation at this point to make it like oh we just like happen to run by you sometimes and it kind of just become a running joke like oh we always see you a running (laughs) show and my kids (laughs) but i didn't even mean for that but uh I don't know. Oh, maybe this is the question for all of you uh, beautiful joggers and non-joggers out there. Was OP the a-hole for both maybe stalking him and B for having this really... I mean, she destroyed his running route. Yeah, that's that's kind of a-holy. Kind of a-holy. Yeah, I think think a little... So that's... I want to hear from everyone else first, but I think... A little bit, but unintentional. She's had an a hole. No. It was unintentional, but yeah. like you know, making someone uncomfortable enough to destroy their running route is kind of, it's kind of sucks. I'll give her the pass, but it, it it is it just sucks that this poor guy does not have his running route anymore. Yeah, that 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 really sucks. My evil coworker broke into my office, stole a parking spot from someone with cancer, and crashed my baby shower. But justice is about to be served. I hope so. That's a lot of life ruining in uh, in a row. F you, Alan. Hard. That's my middle name. <laughs> Working with you these past seven years has been terrible. You are a terrible coworker, and the entire organization thinks so. Do you know how hard it is to induce the scorn of nearly 300 employees, Alan? It's pretty effing hard, Alan. But guess what? You did it! Alan's getting heat. What exactly is it that you do? I know you lurk around our office like you think you're important, drifting into conversations like you have business there. You don't! We will let you know when something pertains to you. I promise. You float into meetings you aren't invited to and steal the extra lunches. You don't even go here. I take those extra lunches downstairs to the interns who could use all the help they can get since they're working for free. And Will, whose entire paycheck nearly goes to pay for medical treatment for his disabled child f you for taking their lunches when you make triple their salaries what in the hell are you even doing at those meetings you have been told repeatedly that you aren't to invite yourself to them but you still do i just wants to be included (laughs) he just he's just he's just out here trying He's just a hungry boy that wants to be included our ceo is a man who loves to hand out second chances to you because you did that one spectacular thing seven years ago when you first started omg you totally brought us such a supporter. I will admit that it was much needed, but when he turned his back on our organization four years ago because of you, you should have been fired. Now, our nonprofit is barely scraping by because you're too lazy to go out and do your actual job. Which is what? We may never know. You have one job, Alan. One effing job. 
job. How dare you go into my office and log onto my computer when I wasn't there? You don't think I know, but I do. You don't even work in my building. You work in the office across town. Wait, so why is Alan there? <laughs> why in the hell are you even here? You don't think I reported you to HR, did you? Uh, I did. And they were appalled. It's part of the reason you are now under review. I recently got a lock installed on my office door. Good luck getting in now. What the hell were you looking for anyway? Yeah, Alan, you snooper. Also, F you for calling me repeatedly while I was on maternity leave for things that weren't emergencies. Debbie was effing handling my stuff while I was out. You got the email I sent out regarding it that you also replied to. I don't even deal with anything you would need to contact me about anyways. Do you have a copy of that report from last year? You literally said that in one voicemail I received shortly after I gave birth. No, I don't effing have a report from last year because I don't handle the reports. I don't effing handle the reports. You aren't new. You know this. The second and third calls while I was still in the hospital giving birth are about how the break room was out of paper towels. I, I don't know if interrupting the birth of your child is uh, worth the phone call, Alan. Coming back after maternity leave to the 200 something emails from you was 200 wonderful. 200 emails? 200. 100 emails. F you, Alan. F you and how you take Carrie's parking spot when you visit our location, even though you know she has to park there because of her recent surgery, because she has effing cancer. Alan. Alan. Also, how dare you come to my baby shower? It was after effing work hours and eat the majority of my awesome cake. That was my cake. No one invited you. How did you even find out about it? You don't even work in our office. Did you just decide to stay in until 7 p.m. one day at the office you don't work at for some reason? You just stumbled into my closed office with that stupid look on your face and said, Ugh, look, okay. Oh my God. F you, Alan. I was pregnant and I was gonna eat that cake. I said you could have one piece, Alan, not the rest of the cake. You really hurt Noah's feelings when you made fun of the way he speaks. He has an effing speech impediment, you ass. Not to mention, you work at a effing nonprofit whose job it is to help people like Noah. Oh, how can you be so clueless, <laughs> Alan? Tomorrow, you have a review with the board and the CEO to determine whether the department you run is up to standards. I hope you fail. It sickens me to think that because of the jobs of individuals with disabilities who work at your location depends on your success, but I can't help but delight in the fact that you're failing. I will dance, Alan. I will dance and I will celebrate with cake. Mine, not yours, and eat it quietly and alone. When they pull your expense records and find out that you are mismanaging funds and finally fire you. F you, Alan. You are the only thing I hate about my job. Wow. Alan got a stern talking to. I mean, that was a that was a manifesto. It was. Know? I hope Alan gets fired. Me too. For OP's sake. Anyone listening or watching has had like a terrible co-worker like the Dwight equivalent the terrible co-worker stories I y'all y'all have to write on it we, we always ask but this one you have to it is we need it is to know we need to know mandatory who are the Allens of your office my husband's cheating on me with my high school bully should I let him continue to do it yes but you should bully him for it I just can't believe that he could fool me his affair started six months ago I could trace it six months back anyways it could have been longer there were no signs no indications no change of behavior no change change in the bedroom. I just found out by accident three weeks ago when his phone was on the nightstand. My husband was sleeping with my high school bully. Yeah, he thought it was over in high school, but guess what? I'm your husband. I grew up in a small town and this woman bullied me severely in middle school and high school. After graduation, I did everything I could to find a job in a bigger city and moved, leaving all of the hurtful memories. I worked hard for a year, found an apartment, bought a car, and later started college. That's where I met my husband. We got married two years ago and I'm eight weeks pregnant. Oh no. He doesn't know yet. I will tell him eventually, don't worry. When I was in college, my bully reached out to me after we bumped into each other at a party. She was in a new town and was glad that she saw a familiar face. She never acknowledged what she did and I never confronted her. I didn't want to open old wounds. However, I wasn't going to befriend her, so I just rebuffed any attempt of reconnecting. She still moved in the same crowd as my husband and me. 
I never told my husband anything about her or our past. I wasn't even sure he knew her name. I'm sure he knows a lot more than her name. But three weeks ago. Oh, God. When my husband was in the shower, he got a notification on Messenger. I thought it was odd since he's not been active on Facebook or Messenger in ages. We don't know each other's codes. So I looked and there was her name and pictures telling him she missed his sweet, sweet man meat. Oh, it's a little telling. I scrolled a few messages back and there was a full conversation. I felt sick and my eyes went blurry. So I just left the phone back to where it was and acted like nothing happened. Oh no. Over the next two weeks, I looked in his phone whenever I could. I found out that my husband deleted Messenger when he didn't use it, except for the time that he forgot. I started doing the same. What? What do you mean? Whenever he's sleeping, playing games, or out for a run, I took his phone and installed Messenger. I could trace back their relationship six months. They've been sleeping together for four. A lot of graphic description of what they want to do or have done to each other, but also a lot about me, although it was often one-sided. It's always my bully asking questions and trying to get answers about me. And my husband is either reluctantly answering or outright telling her not to talk about me. But they've discussed my sex life and apparently I'm vanilla. Oh. To her constant questions about if he preferred me better, he answered that it's different and he doesn't want to compare. I have never cried my whole life combined compared to the last few weeks. I want to leave my husband, but I don't want to tell him why. I don't want to give him or my bully the satisfaction of knowing that they hurt me. I just want to ask for the divorce and just tell him that I wasn't in love with him anymore and I'm not happy in our marriage. I won't be lying technically because he's not the man I loved and I'm not happy in our marriage. I haven't told anyone what I found out. And she's freaking pregnant. But I've told my mom that I want to leave my husband and stated the reasons above. She went berserk. This is so out of the blue and moronic. And the first question she asked was whether I was cheating on him or not. This was a preview to what probably everyone else will think and say. But honestly, I would rather live with being the perpetrator than the victim this time. I just can't let that be hurt me again. Watch me suffer and enjoy it. I just can't. I know I'm being irrational right now, but please put yourself in my shoes and tell me what you would do instead. Dang. Well, there is an update. I guess we answer the question. If you are in OP shoes, what do you do? I see what she's saying where she's like, she wants to leave it on her term. I don't think her plan is necessarily bad. Yeah. I think do whatever she needs to do to feel good. I have broken the news to my husband that I'm leaving him. I had already talked to my friends about it and being unhappy in my marriage seemed good enough a reason for them to support me. One of them offered me her place until I find my own. I got really emotional and hugged her and cried because that meant that I could leave my husband's apartment now. Oh my God. He was shocked when I told him. I don't think he took me seriously at first, but he asked me if he had done something wrong. I told him that I'm simply not happy with him and I think I'm still too young to waste my life in an unhappy marriage. He said he noticed me being distant this past month, but never would he have guessed that I was unhappy with him. He begged me to tell him what's wrong because this can't be it. You know, you know, buddy. You know. He believed me, however, when my friend came to take me with her. This was Thursday. He's been calling multiple times a day, but I haven't answered. He showed up this morning to my friend's house and begged me to have breakfast with him. I agreed. He looks like he hasn't slept or shaven since I asked for a divorce. Divorce. I told him that I was pregnant and that I'm keeping it, but he didn't have to be part of the baby's life if he didn't want to. Damn, man's getting freaking done right My now. My goodness, some just Rightfully. desserts. His phone was on the table and then he got a notification. From Messenger. He had forgotten to delete the app before meeting me. When I saw her name on the screen, I told him, oh, is that Bully's name? You know, she used to bully me in school back when we lived in our hometown. He froze. Oh, I haven't told you about her. I told him everything she did and how it affected me, how she never apologized about anything. He was silent the whole time and just looked at me. I ended it with, be careful with her. I don't think Think she's changed much to tell you the truth. He grabbed my arm and just watched my face like he wanted to see if I knew something. Yeah, that's pretty stone cold right there, oh. honestly. My plan is to buy a small apartment because that's all I can afford right now. A one bedroom is enough until I have my baby and it's old enough 
to need its own room. I can upgrade later when I've saved more. I'm not leaving this city. I've spent my best years here and have the greatest memories. I have my friends around me and hopefully they will be supporting me when the divorce is a fact. I have already filed for divorce, but he's probably going to ask for a thinking period. I'm not in a hurry though. Everything will be better. For now, I want to cry, try to get over him and heal to be there for my baby. Props to her for basically doing everything she wanted to do. And that's like a movie moment where she's like telling him like, it's over and then gets the messenger notification with the girl. I know. And gets she gets the satisfaction of like no of, oh, of yeah. him this is, knowing this without, is who she is. Yeah. And also you just traded me for someone who is a complete asshole and yes. bag that you can't trust. The question is, was Opie the a-hole? I don't think she did anything wrong. And you know, when, when you feel like the victim so much and someone's just wronged you, you I think she just wanted to feel a little bit of like power. Yeah. And it and and that and like that power wasn't really taken in a malicious way. It wasn't. Even it was it just wasn't. like the only power I'm just gonna have is the power of you not knowing if I know. You yeah. know? Yeah. But I feel bad for OP man. My sister is a big bully, and so I snitched on that toxic bimbo to destroy her precious little life. Now she might be suspended, and my dad is pissed at me. So am I the a-hole? We don't hear the the pro-anarchy argument enough. I think anarchy is good. The situation at hand. My stepsister, 17 female, has been bullying this girl in her grade, Mia. Dick. <laughs> Mia is a very shy person. We were never friends, but we're friendly until the bullying started. And then Mia withdrew from everyone. Mm, that sucks. I found out about the bullying a month ago. People described it as not real bullying, but my stepsister has called her names and told her she doesn't deserve friends. Yo, your stepsister is like the epitome of a stepsister. Yeah. Like the Disney, like, yeah. the, like the Disney representation of what a stepsister is. Bro, Disney really came for stepsisters. They came step for stepmother and stepsisters, dude. They, They're like, fuck this particular group of people. Fuck new marriages in particular. Yeah. If you have ever had a new marriage, fuck that thing in particular. Particular. They hate it. They hate it. If you're widowed, stay widowed. I found a note telling Mia this, which first mistake, never, if you're going to bully someone, don't do it in writing. I was pissed. My stepsister and I never had a good relationship, always fighting, but I never figured out she was an actual bully, just someone who got on my freaking nerve. I ended up going to Mia's parents with what I knew and the evidence of the bullying, and now it has been brought up with the school, and Mia's parents want my stepsister expelled. My dad is pissed. He said, it's so unbelievably petty and mean-spirited to go to the girl's parents over sibling issues. <laughs> it's not really sibling issues <laughs> if Mia is the collateral damage. Yeah. yeah. I told my dad nothing between us would ever be sibling issues because we're not siblings. <laughs> Oh, and my siblings, younger brother and sister would never do that to another person. My stepsister has been suspended right now, but it looks like she'll be expelled Thursday when the big meeting happens. My dad's wife is freaking out. And so are my stepbrothers. With the exception of my siblings, everyone seems to think I'm wrong for doing what I did for not at least talking to my stepsister first. Also a bit like. If you're going to get expelled for just the evidence of the bullying that's happening, then you're probably doing something wrong. Yeah. I feel like going to Mia's parents was the right call because of how serious bullying can be for the person being bullied. And even calling someone names can cut a person real deep. But I never expected this kind of reaction. Life at home has been very awkward right now. So, oh, am I the eagle? I want to know from you guys. Like, what do you think? Also, uh, were you a bully or have you been bullied? Mm. I, I don't know if I want to know the worst one. What's the funniest way you've been bullied? Funny, a funny, maybe more lighthearted bully story, which yeah. I guess. Which I I have one. I, yeah, they, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah there I is. Have plenty. Like, I was bullied all, I was bullied every which way. Yeah, yeah, Seriously yeah. Seriously yeah. and yeah. funnily. Yeah. And one of the funny ones was we would sing these church songs. There was a song called, uh, it was like, our God is an awesome God. He reigns on heaven and earth. And earth. <laughs> <laughs> banger. Bro, that was a banger, bro. But he's, his rendition was, Armand is an awesome dude. He's awesome because Sam sucks. Bro, come <laughs> And there was like what? a couple other verses. And everyone sung that in church instead of the real song. So that was my, that was my, those are my funny bullying stories. Is the it was it wasn't funny in the the moment, but pretty funny yeah. now. But John, what do you think is OP the a hole for going directly to me as parents? 
I don't think at all that OP is wrong for going to, telling, the, parents. Tell, going to the parents. Definitely uh, OP made the right call there. I imagine there there's more name a lot calling more. than just like you don't deserve yeah, friends. And, and also the slippery slope. Stop it while it's just small. While you know? it's small. So I, I you know, I if if like in a this like, you know, perfect hypothetical scenario, that was all she said. I would say that is too harsh. But I could also see them being like, hey, we need to be proactive so this doesn't uh escalate, especially with maybe other things that were that they found in the messages and stuff. I'm also surprised that Mia didn't go to her parents about it. Maybe she's like, see it's embarrassing, you know. I could see that being hard in some instances. I probably would myself, but there's this one kid who is like like a frenemy. Like I never knew if we were friends or like his classic thing was, you know, that thing where you can like s- squirt uh, like saliva. Like if you do something the right way, it'll just do like yeah. like a little s- spray. He would literally do that to the back of my head all class sometimes. Ew. And yeah, that's so gross. It sucked. Um, what would you say? I'd be like, stop. But he wouldn't <laughs> fucking stop. You know, that, that just encouraged him to, oh, you mean stop this? <laughs> One time he, the school was doing a video and he did this at the camera and he tried to convince them that he was doing a bow. <laughs> <laughs> My disgusting girlfriend is ashamed of her disgusting daughter because she's a loser who will never be popular. So I gave her a piece of my mind and made her cry. Am I the a-hole? When you don't birth out like a homecoming queen, you're just a complete failure. I'm a 40-year-old man, and my girlfriend of a year is 38. She has a daughter from a previous partner who is 14 and a freshman in high school. I imagine the daughter is 14 and not the previous partner. Uh, just to <laughs> now, that would things. be a story ladies and gentlemen my god i went over there yesterday to find my girlfriend crying i tried to figure out what was going on and where i could help when she told me she was crying about her daughter and how she's doing in school yeah she's not she's not homecoming she's, not homecoming. Dare she? she's butt ugly she won worse dressed voted by me her own mother <laughs> i love her daughter she's the sweetest girl ever i wish my daughters were as well behaved as her i.e a total narc freaking never doing anything fun i have to describe her daughter. She has a nice friend group, does not have trouble with bullies, and generally seems very happy. I bet you're wondering why her mother would be crying if this was the case. Sounds like the daughter's yeah. doing well. Her mother, slash my girlfriend, was crying because her daughter is not the popular athlete cheerleader <laughs> homecoming queen that she was in school. Wow. Oh. Well, maybe you should have given her some social lessons, you know, how to do that. Who cares? Who gives a fuck? Her daughter marches to the beat of her own drum, which I think is the best anyone can hope for. Yeah, she's a little dorky, but her mother referred to her as a loser during a crying fit. Oh my God. She's very into anime. Her and some of her friends actually started an anime club at their school, which right. I don't know if is uh, winning you any homecoming <laughs> yeah. queen points. Not Yeah, not, not helping for the crown again she's a happy kid she's got her social circle who all have similar interests it's just not the circle her mom wishes she was in here are some of the quotes from her during this that turned me red i never would have imagined my daughter would be a dweeb she needs to grow out of this before college and my personal favorite i wouldn't have been caught dead with kids that look like that Dude, who cares about being happy and having a friend group that loves you and likes the things you do if you're not hanging out with straight tens? Okay, in all seriousness, this mom sounds like a dirtbag. Bro, just There's a little insane. bit more. There's a little bit more. I called her disgusting and told her she should be ashamed of herself. And I said, her daughter is happy. And how would she feel to hear her mom crying about her perceived popularity? I told her how lucky she has it that her daughter doesn't deal with a lot of issues kids these days have. This ends with her being upset with me because instead of consoling her when she was crying, I called her names. I don't think the crying means anything. She was saying horrible things. So, is OP the a well, I'm very curious to hear everyone's thoughts, especially their thoughts on like, maybe it's how do you raise your Does child? Does popularity matter? How do you raise your child? Being comfortable with yourself. Yeah, I, feel like I think very that's hard. way more important than being popular. Like I was not popular in school, but like I, I had this similar thing where like, you know, I made weird videos on YouTube or I had like an internet comic. And like, I was just comfortable expressing that part of myself, even though it wouldn't make me popular. Knowing yourself and allowing yourself to like, just discover what your interests are. That, that's the most important thing. 
And I feel like for us in our personal lives, like that quality about ourselves is what has allowed us to like have the audacity to do something like this podcast or like being a full-time contract, which oh, is yeah. like very hard to like put yourself Two out dudes there. starting and, a podcast? What? That's, that takes guts. Oh yeah, that's right. You forget about your your uncle or your, your grandpa that went to World War II. Starting a podcast, that's the real battleground. I'm very curious to, especially all the parents in our audience, how do you instill like self-confidence in a child? I would love to, to yeah. see what you say in the, the comments. And also, if you think the que- to answer the question, is OP the a-hole? I do not at all think OP is the a-hole. I think, I think the mom really, really needed this reality check of like, listen, you're like, I, I feel like she's going to instill this like sense of insecurity in her daughter where yeah. she's going to be like, am I like cool enough? Am I like, like constantly second guessing what she's doing? Would love to know what you guys think. So put your answers in the comments. I just slept with my cousin and my friends are using that to destroy my life. But then my friend's dad took a paternity test and it revealed the truth. Am I the a it revealed the truth that this cousin is uh, smoking hot. So I, 21 male, come from a very large and messy family. Think the Gallagher's from Shameless multiplied by 10. <laughs> Literally, everyone has multiple baby mamas slash daddies. Everyone isn't speaking to about half the family at any even time. And a lot of people have had kids taken off them to be adopted or to go in foster care. And almost every single man has done time in prison and about half the women. Wow. What a first sentence. Wow. Am I right, dude? This is my paternal family, by the way. My mom comes from a very normal family, and her and my father have been divorced since I was six months old. I didn't see much of my dad growing up, but I've been trying to get to know him and his family now. They're nice people. They just have a lot of issues. It freaking sounds like it. For real, my dude. I remained in state for college, but I moved about 10 hours away from my hometown. In October of last year, I had a short fling with a girl at college, 21 female called Haley. In December, I spent Christmas with my paternal family because my dad had just reconciled with his brother and he wanted me to meet my cousins. And it would just be my luck that Haley is my cousin. I had no way of knowing because we had never met before and she was adopted by her stepdad and thus has his surname, not her father's surname. Once I got over my shock and horror, I spoke to Haley and we agreed to take the knowledge of our fling to our graves and just to be friendly around the family. I mean, hey, look. How friendly. <laughs> we already we already knocked down the door. We're already in the room. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? You've already knocked down the barn door. Might as well play with the horses <laughs> while you're in there. You might as well. Despite resolving the issue, it weighed on my conscience for a bit, and I got super drunk and told my friend group. Not a great move, buddy. Yeah, what happened to dying with the knowledge? Most are sympathetic and reassured me that I wasn't a bad person, but Mike, 22 male, <laughs> found it hilarious. I wouldn't have cared about a few jokes because admittedly, the situation is funny in a weird way, but Mike finds a way to worm it into every single conversation. I want to talk about Game of Thrones? He'll make a Jamie and Cersei joke. He sends me articles about weird incest cults and will say things like, don't worry, man. In some cultures, it's normal to get with your cousin to make fun of me. Stop. No, don't stop. That's hilarious. I've been dealing with this since February. So when he brought it up yesterday at a hangout, I blew up. Basically, Mike's parents divorced a few years ago because it was found out that Mike's mom had been cheating around the time he was conceived and it took a year before Mike's dad agreed to a paternity test. When he made a joke about Haley and I, I just said, all right, but you didn't know who your real father was for over a year. Shut up. If you can't take it, don't. (laughs) If the shoe fits, then my foot's going in it. He left immediately and sent me a text to say that it wasn't his fault that he didn't know who his father was. And I was an asshole for throwing it in his face. Most of our friends are split because I essentially called his mom a by saying that. But I think he had it coming. He wants an apology. So am I the a-hole? I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Put it right now. Do you think OP is the a-hole for making a joke about Mike's dad? and Mike not knowing who his dad is for a uh, joke about OP sleeping with a cousin. Also, do you think OP owes Mike an apology? I think OP should apologize and I think that OP is the a-hole. Really? I think that OP is the a-hole because here's here's my take. In my opinion, I don't think it's that like big of a deal. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, you know what it's John almost like? John grew up in the country in Florida, by the way. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
again, I, I don't think there was that much harm there. And <laughs> OP's comments to Mike, bro, that... That hits deep. That hit a yeah. little, little deep. I totally understand OP being like, I want my kids to be so annoying. Yeah. Like, like, it, it, I, like almost, I also don't want it to break out. Like I told you this to you in confidence. I think he needs to sit Mike down and be like, you really have to stop. Like, it's, yeah. it's just like, A, it was funny, but like, it's honestly just like, so whatever, you know, whatever the explanation is. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to know what you guys think. <laughs> so question to you guys, do you know someone that hooked up with their cousin or did, did you, you hook yeah, up confession with your cousin? time Stop. my grandma is plotting to kidnap me for ransom i send money to support my family overseas but apparently not enough granny's trying to get her back the title says it all i don't really know how to process or what there is to process as the story of immigrants go, my parents have been in the United States for about four decades. They spent their time working hard, becoming citizens, and setting up their kids the best that they can. Even though we never had much, my mom has done her best to help the family that she left behind. She sent money to different folks for necessities since the American dollar goes much further there. Whenever she visited, she would bring clothes that we outgrew and helped with installing hot water, internet, etc. Dude, the mom is like all around. She's she's the plumber. She's the she's Wi-Fi technician. All. Oh. the the bank like my goodness fast forward to last year my mom was visiting my grandma at their farm in a remote part of the country for an extended period of time there on the farm she learned how the money she sent was actually being used all these years she grew angry and disappointed with her family holding them accountable for the first time. It's unclear if there was a trigger or if this was planned prior, but somehow her cousin learned of the plans and told my grandma to run, that she was in danger and that there was plans to kidnap her. What? My mom said at that moment, several things clicked in her mind and she took off, saying that there was an emergency here in the US. Sadly, their intent was confirmed by another cousin who witnessed the aftermath after she left. Men rushing in, looking for her and grandma being angry, trying to get her to stay and discuss how they'll try again next time. To this day, it's believed that they don't know my mom knows. It's also unclear if the extent was to extort money from her or us who were in the States at the time. She's figured out that my uncle slash her brother was aware but didn't try to protect her. That's so crappy. My mom told my dad and I today about a year after it happened. It's just nuts. I'm angry. That's not my family. That's absolutely crazy. They like baited the mom. The mom into... came over and then the grandma's like, oh, I bet I can get more money. Like they've been sending back all this money to me. I bet I can get more money if I kidnap the mom. Wow. Maybe granny's being like pressured by someone else. But to freaking put your own daughter up for ransom. Hey, the economy, man. In this economy. So real question, how much money would it take for you to sell your grandma? Uh, <laughs> put your answers in the comments below. My homophobic family thinks trying to make it in Hollywood will make me poor and like men. But now the awards are rolling in. Are they trying to get my money now? I'm keeping this anonymous as possible because I don't want this coming back to me. I've been working as a crew member in the film industry for several years at this point. While I'm always passionate about movies and knew I wanted to work in the entertainment industry, my family never supported me. Come on, fam. They are a very religious family from the Midwest with some very narrow-minded ideas. I could go into further detail, but one of their long-standing beliefs is that Hollywood is going to turn me gay or into a socialist. Which, you know, it will do both. But it doesn't stop my uncles and cousins from cracking gay jokes or trying to make me vote their way every time I visit. So then I got a gig working for a movie a couple of years ago. I can't say what movie it was, but the director is known to be pretty left winged. Everyone watching, I would love for you to, I, I bet one of our audience could guess the correct director. So all of you film buffs out there, comment what director you think it is. Now I had already stopped talking to most of my relatives by then, but they still were talking trash about how I was quote, supporting anti-Americanism and labeled me stuff that would get this post banned by working on this film. This family sounds like a peach. As I'm typing this, the film I worked on is a Academy Award nominee. Congrats, OP. Dang, the gay socialist agenda goes all the way to the top. Now, I know Reddit likes this 
the Oscars. But for a guy like me, this is a huge deal, but I couldn't be prouder to be a part of it. Apparently, my family now thinks so too because their Facebook feeds are all about praising me and the movie. Oh, oh so they they turned a little, little, did a little 360, did a little 180. Now, even all the members who bullied me, signed me up for certain political mailing lists and never supported my career are now chiming in. I don't want to go into further detail, but, but normally they would be singing another radically different tune if you catch my drift. My wife is kind of pissed at me now because I took to Facebook and called everybody out. I made this post venting about all the ways they were a-holes to me growing up and leading up to now and how they took every possible way to undermine my career that I am happy and proud of. And if I were actually to make an Oscar speech, I sure as hell would not be thanking them because they never gave a damn about my accomplishments because it doesn't agree with their effed up ideology. So they should take down all these posts praising my movie because it makes them look like idiots, especially when you compare it to the rest of the stuff they usually post. OP did not hold back. I know. And he put this all in the post. I wonder if he's like adding each individual family member. And he's like, and Sandra, I know you just put that little Facebook post praising my Oscar. But how about when you called me a dirty socialist? How about that? My relatives have been spamming my social media and phone and berating me for my post, saying that I'm ungrateful and I owe it to them for what? I don't know. My wife, while she doesn't like them either, thinks I went overboard and I should have just cut ties with the toxic members and ignore the posts. I disagree. They treated me like garbage for years, so they don't deserve to piggyback on what basically is the biggest high of my career so far. If I don't tell them to knock it off, they'll just continue to mooch on it from afar. So am I the a-hole? I mean, I want to know what everyone else thinks. Maybe a little bit. I think the best response to your your enemies is to not be like them and like to call them out maybe is, is being a little bit like them. The best thing you could do is just ignore them and cut them out of your life. I think at that point, you just message them privately and you're like, listen, you clowned me for, for like all these years. You don't get to be a part of my success. And now you haven't, you haven't stooped to their level by publicly, you know, embarrassing them, but you've let them know, like you cannot, you know, ride my coattails. But we'd love to know what you think, you know, what, what, what do you think OP should do? You know, maybe there's a little bit of an opportunity for education here. Who knows? My homophobic dad disowned me because I'm gay, but now he's marrying a man. I want to expose him and ruin the wedding. Am I? the a-hole. My father threw me out of the house at 15 for coming out as gay. Disgusting. I am now 21 and happily married to the boyfriend I wanted to introduce him to when I was 15. Oh. On my wedding day, my father had an invitation to his wedding hand delivered to me by one of those hired delivery people. I don't know what they're called. His wedding date is the anniversary of when I started dating my husband. Both dates he knew because of my uncle. What is going on over here? I threw the invitation away and didn't even think about it until my aunt, his sister, reached out and told me he wanted to talk and apologize for everything and that he wanted me to be at his wedding. <sighs> okay. Okay. Huh? I told her that I'd consider it and talk to my husband about it. He's the one who convinced me to go and said we should just see what he says. We drove down a day early and my father basically avoided us all day. I know weddings are a busy time, but every time one of us tried to speak to him, he had to go somewhere and then he said he'd talk to me after the wedding. The problem with this was that their reception wasn't supposed to end until two and they had a flight for 3.30 to their honeymoon. So I knew he wouldn't be able to talk to me. And then me and my husband were going to leave the reception as soon as was appropriate to go around our hometown to places we haunted in high school when we first started dating. By haunted, do we mean uh, a little... Oh, uh, that groan. Oh, yo. goodness gracious. Oh! <laughs> Sound like a dying wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I was going for a uh, sexy ghost. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> because my father's wedding was held in the morning, we thought we could celebrate our anniversary in the afternoon and evening. I informed him of this, and he said that he would just call me when he could. That's when I realized none of his fiance's family or his fiance had any idea that he had thrown me out and that he had told them I moved away from college. I gathered this through talking to his fiance and his family. I'd never met the fiance nor his family until the day before the wedding and only briefly. I didn't really sit down and talk to any of them until the morning of the ceremony. So when my dad's fiance asked me about college, I was like, 
uh, I've never been to college. That's when I realized what my father never told him, that he kicked out his own son for being gay. This guy has the audacity to bring him back and like... Yeah, you should really just like say what happened in the past. <laughs> like, it's gonna come out. Also, how is the fiance or no one else like, oh, hey, here's your son we're meeting for the first time ever? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I told him the truth at breakfast before we even had left for the venue. I objected the marriage right then before the ceremony even started. I objected because I realized that this man was in love with my father, but my father had lied to him and I felt that he deserved to know before they got married. I apologized and then explained the situation and then promptly left. A lot of my family members said I was an asshole and that I could have waited until they got married, but I don't think the fiance deserved to marry someone who lied about something so big, especially no. something that was homophobic and they're a homosexual couple. <laughs> I'm just surprised that the father oh, never said anything. Nothing. And hey, like coming out is really, really difficult, especially yes. in some areas of the country. And there can be a lot of self-hatred for people who just don't feel comfortable in their own identities. And so like, yes, it sucks and it's not excusable. And it's like, it's it's really, really bad. But that can be part of your, your you know, coming of age and coming to terms with who you are and coming out story. And you can be, you, you can say like, hey, I was terrible before, but I've come around. Yeah, I, I mean, which hopefully is the case. It's like, That's I, all mean, we can hope I, I for. would have to imagine that. But it, but it also is still weird that he literally didn't talk to like he didn't talk to the son till it made him look good, which is the son coming to the wedding. Yeah. You yeah. know, so it's just so confusing. A little bit more to the story. Okay. I only heard about the big fallout through my aunt because I left with my husband. But apparently my father and ex fiance. Oh ex-fiance oh. got into a massive argument and the wedding was called off. <sighs> I don't speak to either parties now, though I did message the fiance on Facebook to apologize later that day because I felt bad about ruining his wedding. But he said he was glad that I told him the truth. So the question to all of you beautiful people is, is OP the a-hole by telling the truth about his homophobic father who's getting married to a man at the wedding? Wow. John, I want to uh, tippy tap right now on your keyboards and tell us who you think the a-hole is. But John, what do you think? Help me out here, guys. Okay. I do not think that OP is the a-hole because I do think that this is a truth that both it's a a truth that the fiance deserves to know because it's pretty like integral to like his life. Yeah. He is a gay man. So to, to like that is an important part of, 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 of your partner's past and uh, like to know, to be aware of. And also like the father literally kicked out his own son at 15 years old and like thinks he's going to skate out and, and like get away and with no it repercussions and for not have to face the yeah. music like that's like no <laughs> so and, and hey the fiance thanked Opie like thank you yeah. for telling me the truth at least he didn't have to get the marriage annulled like and, and that's so crazy to the family like oh just like wait till after the wedding it's like bro then they're married and they have to go through the divorce which is not easy so it's like what are we doing I completely agree I think OP is not the a-hole. Like, OP didn't have a choice. He was literally, like, invited to the wedding and it happened. Yeah, like, yeah. guys, tell tell the people before the goddamn wedding. Like, yeah. this is what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. The dad could have saved the wedding if he had said what happened. Be honest. Be honest. Because it's good. That's, that's all we're saying. Yo, just be honest. Just be, be honest. honest. Be yourself. Own unless your mistakes. you're homophobic. And then be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also... I would love to know if anyone has ever objected to a wedding. Oh, oh, please. Is there any I object to Bro, stories. we need some straight Shrek objections in yeah, our, in our comments. Please Shrek drop them Jackson. in, guys. My best friend thinks it's our anniversary, but we're not even dating. Now he's going on a sexist rant. Should I get him canceled? Am I the a-hole? I've known him for five years, different classes and courses, but same friend group. Over time, he has genuinely become one of the best people I know, and it's only getting better every day. I can't lie. He's not my type. Nerdy, charming, sweet, funny, flirty with the right amount of awkward. It sounds like you're describing your type. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> He's kind of perfect, but I've never even thought about putting the moves on him. He's never shown romantic interest in me. We're friends, 
nothing more. Or that's what I thought. Today, he was spending the afternoon at my dorm. We're laying on my bed when he says verbatim, so baby, where do you want to go this Friday? No. Matter of fact, this is the first time I've been called baby by him. So that kind of shocked me. Instead of asking why, I froze and was just like, "What? what's happening Friday? He turns to me and kisses me. Again, first time thing with us. Hugs my waist and goes, our one year anniversary is idiot. I'm making reservations. You're the idiot. I love hands like, you know what? We're just dating right now. It's in my head. I'm just going to make it a reality. At this point, I'm frozen. I genuinely don't know what to say. I'm gobsmacked. The dude I thought was my best friend who never even showed interest in the dating thing is under the idea that we've been dating for an entire year. I'm silent while he continues hugging me and scrolling on his phone, racking my brain, thinking about what to tell him when his phone starts ringing. It's his mom, which he puts on speaker and she dead goes, hi, honey. Are you still with your girlfriend? Oh my God. So now his mom thinks we're dating too. He tells her, sorry, I'll be back in a bit, sweetheart. I just nodded and I was just like, all right, see you in a bit. No questions, no screaming, just acceptance, which I guess is the best way <laughs> it's going to have gone for this guy is like, oh. I just pulled out the biggest heist in history. He gets up to put on his sneakers and leans down to kiss me again, which I just accept at this point. It's a nice kiss besides the fact that my mind is somewhere else and he leaves. Apparently, the majority of people I talk to think we're dating or if I'm being correct here, know we're dating and just have never mentioned it to me. This makes no sense. I don't know what to do now. I mean, he's a great guy. Don't get me wrong. And if the last five years are anything to go by, he would be is a great boyfriend, maybe even in the future, a husband. But I've never looked at him that way. So I can't say I love him. When this occurred, it was like the glass shattered. And I saw how differently he looked at me, how he talked and acted Stuff that never changed at the beginning, but for some reason, I've never noticed. I can't sit here and pretend I love him like that. I wasn't thinking about him in that sense all this time. But on the other side, I don't want to hurt him. He clearly thinks we've been together for that long, so he has to have strong feelings for me. And I don't want to step on them and scar him like that. But a year? How do you not kiss for a year and think you're dating? This show was sponsored by your sweet, sexy ass. If you support our Patreon, you'll get one long, hard, extra bonus episode every week. I'm talking three juicy stories right into those ear holes. You'll get ad-free episodes. I'm talking all of those ads completely off. All natural. Not to mention, we'll do it together, live, in front of a camera. With assholes and Anonymous, you'll get a chance to talk to us directly and maybe be featured on the YouTube channel. Wait, say when not like that. Like the fans get to share their stories with us and other fans and we get to talk about it, right? And then we'll moon each other at the end. Oh God. So if you want all that axe ass, support your boys at patreon.com slash OKOP show. That's patreon.com slash OKOP show. I just don't know what to do. I'm scared and angry. Disappointed in myself for not recognizing the situation earlier. Feel like I'm stuck between the sword and the wall. Last thing I want to do is hurt him, but I also don't want to lie to him. How should I go in about this with him? I've already sent him a message to meet after practice. He said, yes. So I'll have to talk to him soon. And there is an update, but John, what should OP do? <sighs> like totally shut it down because all of the things happened the first time this day have to shut it down i think what he might be doing is lying to himself and convincing himself that i will accept let's see what happens i decided that we should meet up in a public space before his practice i sent him a text and asked if he wanted to meet up at a coffee shop we both know he called and said yes and you sound serious should i be worried to which i said honestly yes you should Ooh! he told me to stop joking and went on to his practice Dang. fast forward a couple hours i'm sitting there and he comes in. Are you really okay? You didn't seem good a while ago. And from what you said, I'm actually worried now. So I laid out on him. I asked him why he thinks we're dating and why does everyone else too? And what led him to thinking that? Now he's just quiet and I'm just looking at him, not saying anything. Stuff after this is a bit fuzzy because I just wanted to cry. This came very out of the blue for me as well. It's just effing weird looking back at it. He said something like, I didn't really think we could actually date if I asked you up front. So he knew. To which I said, that's how relationships usually work. You ask. To which led him on a tangent about women in general. What I saw in front of me was no longer my best friend of five years. It was a boy 
who grew up to be a man and to have a very damaging idea of women. I just interrupted him and asked what led him to think about women this way. He was quiet for a while and that did give me some pity until he opened that mouth of his again and said, you know, there's these podcasts. No. That let me know everything I needed to. Oh, so you're a little Tate fanboy now. He starts arguing and yelling. To be honest, I'm not really listening to him at this point. I just want to get out of there and cry. I'm listening, but nothing is registering. Some of the milder things he started yelling are about women and our relationship with food and how we should have a limited amount, how we're so vulnerable and emotional, ready to blame men for everything, and how we start yelling at every minute inconvenience, which is funny, in hindsight, how menstrual stuff was a hoax and that I was no doubt lying when I couldn't walk from my period pains because I wanted his attention and that no girl can possibly feel a greater pain than that of a man. He also said that when we were talking about his course, something to do with car parts, it was not cute and sweet of me let alone women in general, to act dumb and pretend I'm clueless because that does not make me more appealing. I generally don't know how a car works my effing bad. I tell him that if this is all a big joke, it's not funny. He interrupts me and talks about how he listens to these men but doesn't tell anyone because he knows I and our friends wouldn't agree. Tells me I'm not a perfect woman, whatever that means, but he would still like to date me but couldn't tell me because I'd say no and ruin his fantasy. Bro, you know the best way to get a girl to date you it's to go on a sexist tyrant. Wow, it's, it's it works every time, you know? All right, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way, because that's a terrible way to approach it. I'm crying now and people are noticing, so I just want to get out of there immediately. I tell them, not verbatim, but along the lines of, you're so effing stupid, you genuinely could have dated me if only you had asked. You could have had everything, but you started listening to opinions of guys who have nothing. How sad can you be to pull a stunt like this instead of asking like a normal person? He starts yelling that I'm wrong and they know what is right, starting a whole rant that I don't have the strength to listen to him. I stand up, start walking, and he grabs my arm. More people are staring. I tell him to let go, and he only does when I threaten to call the police. I left telling him to never speak to me again. I am now home. I blocked him on everything and told some friends what happened. They were all shocked by how he acted and what he said. One guy did tell me he was always easy to influence, though. I asked why they thought we were dating, and they told me it was how we acted like a couple. I guess that one is on me. Come by with the fact that he told them yes when they asked and since the behavior checked out they just never thought to talk about it with me so that is that i thought i had a nice friend by my side but guess not never trust a guy even if you grew up with him they'll disappoint you eventually hope you don't get too jaded but this dude does sound like bag. wow i don't know how this dude is still thinking the tate method is working when it literally is not working in front of his eyes. Even if he wanted to be a little a little cutesy with it and be something like, hey, like I want to cel celebrate our anniversary. We met a year ago and yeah, I've been working up the nerve. Like I would love to take you out to dinner or like, I don't know. They're like, you that's so cute. That's I love that. I love you that. You could be cute about it, but he just went about it the yeah. completely wrong opposite way. I can't believe it didn't come out earlier. Yeah. I just rage quit my job of five years. Now the company's failing and begging me to come back. I said no and twisted the knife. Am I the cool? A bit of backstory. I have worked at this very small, less than 50 people company for about five years. I was brought on as an assistant and within three years, I worked my way up to one of the heads of the departments. Big head honcho over here. My job is a niche within a niche. So I was able to train myself in a very industry specific knowledge niche industry returns. Niche industry. when anyone explains their job on reddit they're super vague and they just say niche industry my company has its problems many of the higher ups are toxic resort to bullying and overall can be but I put up with it because I was learning very valuable skills and I truly am passionate about what I do in the industry. <laughs> Niche industry. When the pandemic struck, my work refused to let people work from home. One person walked out and I was so scared I started to have a panic attack. I live with someone who was high risk, so I was terrified I was going to give it to them. I had to threaten to quit before they let me work from home. They finally relented. And guess what? My productivity skyrocketed. I increased our winning rate by 23% since the beginning of 2020 alone. It has been better for my mental health to be away from the bullies and I can focus easier. It also improved my health. I lost 30 pounds without even trying. My carpal tunnel practically disappeared. 
So it sounds like literally My everything God. is better because they work from home. Last week, I was offered a job for a similar role in a bigger competing company. They were offering me a $23,000 a year increase in salary and a fully remote position. And I was on the fence because despite more money, it was hard to let go of a place that I spent so much time and so much professional development on. I also was worried about several of my coworkers, the ones who aren't bullied. I mean, but that 23K, what yo. Like, come you can, on, You can guys. still be friends with these people outside work. On Monday morning, I go to one of my higher ups with my dilemma. She was so supportive, immediately congratulating me and said, I'm going to talk to the CEO tomorrow. I'll tell him your situation. So he has the opportunity to counter offer you, which is great. That's, okay. that's super that's smart. Good. I told her it wasn't really the money. It was also the remote work policy. So today I get a call, the higher up, and this is how our conversation went. Her. The CEO is willing to raise your salary, but first he wants to negotiate you coming back into the office. Me. What? Doesn't he realize this other position is fully remote? Her. Yes, but he says the company has been generous with working with you on being remote, and now you will need a doctor's note to remain such. Generous? There was a global pandemic. It wasn't some sort of favor to me. It was what the company had to do because of the vid. I'm glad they finally did it, but I had to beg because I was so scared I was going to unalive my partner. Her. Yes, but some people remained in office this whole time. Me. That's not my freaking problem. They were not taking it seriously, and there were no rules implemented by the company regarding masks, social distancing, etc. Them staying in the office made me realize I had to remain staying at home because I knew they weren't being safe. Her. That's why he says it's generous he has let you stay home for so long. Me. I've also proven I am more effective in a remote position. It has been a net positive for the company as a whole. Her. I understand. Me. I don't care if you give me a salary increase. This is about R-E-S-B-E-C-T respect, baby. Uh -uh. Uh. I was on the fence about this new position, but now I see that I have to take it. Consider this my official notice. I quit. I just signed the contract with a new company. Thanks for making it easy on me, old company. And there is an update, John. There is oh. an update. But I wanna I wanna get your feel. Do you think OP should quit? What do you think is like the minimum necessary for OP to quit in this in this case? Man, I mean, for OP, definitely beat the 23K because it's like, I feel like OP has gone through a lot of like headaches. So that's another thing OP has to weigh of like, do I want to kind of continue to deal with like potential headaches from these people in the future? Because yeah. they've given yeah. me so many in the past. I got another phone call the next day from my previous employer asking if I had decided on what I'm doing. I reiterated that I told you the first time I quit and they pulled out a full guilt trip on how I can't leave them high and dry. I hung up again, but decided ultimately to finish out the two weeks since I could use a paycheck. The two weeks were wild. They kept acting like I wasn't leaving. They kept assigning me new projects that I couldn't possibly finish. And every time I brought up my departure, they'd talk over me or ignore me. Whatever. I kept telling myself it wasn't my problem. So I decided just to half-ass everything until my time was up and I would get my last paycheck. On my last day, I went to turn in my computer and everyone in the office kept asking me to do more work. I kept telling them, it's my last day. I am leaving. My computer is being turned in. I can't possibly work further. One of the execs got teary and kept wailing about, but who is going to do all this? I shrugged and said, you guys had two weeks to figure that out. And this was generous of me. Flipping it on them. Oh, Mm. The CEO ran out of the back door as soon as he heard me come in through the front door so he wouldn't have to say goodbye. He continued texting me to do work throughout the day, so I ended up blocking his number. And about the new job. I started the new job, and it's been a dream. The pay and benefits are so much better. There isn't a bullying problem here, and it's almost like the blinders were pulled off of me. I didn't realize how abusive my old workplace was until I was working with a team of actually nice people. For months, I'd react like a battered housewife. Every time I'd make a mistake, I'd be on the brink of tears and overly apologetic. But everyone here has been nothing but kind and supportive and understanding. Of course, there's always room for improvement, but it's like night and day better. Meanwhile, every few weeks, I'd get a phone call from my old company. Here, 
are some of the highlights of what they have asked slash what has happened. None of this paperwork is getting done and no one knows how to do it. If I don't tell them, they will lose money. Guess what? Not my problem. <laughs> come on. Will I come back if they hire me an assistant? No. Will I come back if they hire me an assistant and match my pay? No. And you are supposed to give a counter offer before someone leaves for a new job, not months afterwards. Now, my old position has been split into two positions and has two different job postings because they can't find anyone who can do all of it. Lol, not my problem. We hired someone for one of the positions, but they quit on the spot and walked out after four days. Lol, good for them. They sent me a contract to be an on-call consultant for them. Like they didn't even ask. They just sent it to my email with the email body saying, please sign and return as soon as possible. I already have a job. Wow. Now, my old position has been split into three different positions with three job postings. My absence has made one of my former coworkers so stressed that she's now in the hospital and they said I should be ashamed of myself to not come back and help her. It's not me overworking her to death. It's this company. Now, my old position is split into four positions. That's right, effing four different positions with four different job postings. Will I come back if they literally offer me double the money with an assistant? I was so glad they asked. I got to tell them straight up, there are some things money can't buy and I didn't quit over money, so you can't get me back with money. We are losing tons of money and may have to do layoffs soon if you don't come back. Sorry, but F you. Moral of the story, never accept the counter and don't put up with BS. Wow. Oh, such a satisfying ending, man. I know. OP Ooh. really stuck it to them. It sounds like OP was literally the whole company. Like they took OP out and then everything fell to sh over something as dumb as like them wanting people in person. And you know that it's just a stupid thing that they're they want because they're dummies. My mom spent twenty five thousand dollars on a fortune teller to find what? love. So I screamed at her. No one wants you. Am I the a-hole? This might be a bit messy because my brain is still in shambles from what I just learned. But I'm trying to just make this all understandable. We're off to a great start. You always know it's good when it starts like that. So three years ago, my 21 female mom, 47 male, split from my dad, 53 male. Good decision, really. Me and my siblings, who are 17 gender fluid and 14 male, were honestly relieved to have him out of the house for a variety of reasons that are not essential to the story. Around that time, our mom told me and my older sibling that she had been in love with a teacher from the school that I went to and my siblings still attend for nine years, 12 by now. We will call him G. G. Because Ooh. he knows how to hit that G spot. Oh, goodness. Honestly, he's great. Both me and my sibling encouraged her in pursuing a new relationship. And they actually started writing emails back and forth. That's cute. That's so cute. Old people writing emails to each other. It went semi-well for a while, but she started to become impatient. I don't even know how else to describe it, but to me and my sibling, it felt like a descent into a legit madness. She is sort of a compulsive liar, and over the course of a year, she started to come up with more and more outrageous white lies and plans in order to get close to G. It was the only thing she could talk about. Girl needs a hobby. I didn't mind it in the beginning and I tried to be supportive, but her entire mood started depending on those emails. She was either sulking and pity parting for herself if he took a while to respond or she was scheming how to get him into her life the way she wants him to be. Red flags. Red flag city. Six yep. flags right here. I'm talking hours and hours of running the same circles with her and discussing nothing else until late into the night to the point where me and my siblings were trying to manage all her emotions. It was unbearable and it started to freak us out. We were barely recognizing our mother anymore. G wasn't all too comfortable either. Apparently after a little over a year, he sent her a message that basically shot down any further contact. I have a feeling this is not going to end well, Sam. I think she's going to go bad. Yeah. The first thing I thought when I heard about it was, oh shit. How am I going to get her to cope? It was then that I learned that in love is not the right way to describe what my mom is feeling. She is obsessed with this man, stalker level, foaming at the mouth, obsessed. And for months, I spent every second that I was alone with her going over the words of this last goddamn email, listening to her theories and speculations and whatnot. Ugh. It got better after a while when I managed to establish some boundaries, but my mom fell into a borderline depression then. And 
I felt guilty for abandoning her with her feelings. Still, I thought she was getting over him. She thought. We always thought. Why are you thinking? Stop thinking. Yes. Turn that brain off. A few months ago, the big change happened. Apparently, a woman out of G's social circle called our home and told her that he has feelings for her, but he is worried about his integrity as a teacher, blah, blah, blah. Oh. So he's into it. I was shocked when she told me because I would have bet on a restraining order over a confession. When I say it was like a shark smelling blood in the water, I am not exaggerating. There were the plans again, the theories, the obsession. She even memorized his schedule to run into him and she wanted me to help. She semi blackmailed me slash bribed me into an agreement and then held my inaction over my head all the time, expecting me to come up with a perfect plan for her. She's like, hey, you're a teenager, right? Get all your teenager friends in a Scooby-Doo van together to solve the mystery of why he doesn't love me. I think I'll solve the case. (laughs) He just doesn't love you. No matter how much I tried to argue with her and hold her back, I could have tried stopping a moving train and it would have been more successful. All that is relevant about this, though, is that she sent G another lengthy email that was just, God, I don't want to say pathetic, but it was. I really want to read this email. Me too. Release the email. Release it. Today then, my sibling tells me she saw an email in our mother's inbox from a woman that calls herself a spiritual therapist or some shit. Basically saying she is a media. We know that because my sibling remembered her name and we Googled it. I had such a bad feeling about this, but my gut was screaming at me like never before. So I logged into her email address from my phone. She once gave me her password in case she forgets it. And there were messages with this guru lady going back all the way to when G dumped her. When I read those emails, I was shaking so hard. I almost dropped my phone. Almost $25,000 for this fake bitch to connect with G's subconscious. She spent decades paying off her mortgage with my dad. She cries to us about having money issues to the point where my 14 year old brother had qualms about asking her for a new school backpack because he felt guilty. God, I am so livid just thinking about it. And the best part, the phone call from G's acquaintance wasn't real. It was what that doctor told her. No. I found literal quotes in the emails of things my mom told me the woman in the phone call told her, but it was all that money hungry scammer. On one hand, I am so angry at my mom for doing this. I also have extreme pity for her. This guru took advantage of a desperate, vulnerable state and is stringing her along with half costing my mom thousands of dollars. What my mother needs is actual effing therapy. I am completely at my wits end, but I know this can't keep going. Anyone who can give me advice, please, please do. It feels like the floor just dropped out from underneath me and I am scared of what will happen next. So the TLDR, my mother is obsessed with a man and when he shot her down, I just found out she turned to a guru. She is about $25,000 in debt on a minimum wage job with two kids to support help. So the question is, is, what should OP do? And also, have any of you ever had experiences with the clairvoyance? And do you even believe in that? And have you ever had any experiences that would either cause you to believe in it or cause you to definitively not believe in it? Definitely drop your supernatural stories below. Drop it right now. Tippy tap in those comments. But uh, John, what do you think? Like, what should OP do? I think the mom needs a specialist to be able to sit down and like figure out what's going on here. Cause like, I have no idea where to begin on a diagnosis or whatever, but maybe a professional could give her a diagnosis. And along with that, what could be done to help her understand and see why this is so insane why yeah. she shouldn't do this you know but what i mean it is freaking insane and what annoys me is like these like fake psychics like they prey on people but maybe there's a few clairvoyants in the mix that are that are actually legit that's actually where i'd love to store some stories from the okay gang like Definitely. have you had experiences with fake psychics with real psychics we want to know your stories my friends are furious at me after i saved a girl's life they're mad because of how i administered first aid am i the a hole so This happened the other day. I, 23 male, was at a pool party at my best friend Greg's house. There was also a slip and slide set up and people were using it, having fun. My friend Amy used it and screamed. Ah! Good scream, John. Good scream. Good scream. The whole party turns to her and she's clutching her chest. There is blood pouring out of her hand. Oh my God. 
Okay, so turns out she had slid over a rock on the slip and slide and cut herself. <sighs> that is, oh. So I'm in nursing school, so I run over and ask to see the cut. She pulls her hand away and I see that it doesn't look too serious, but it definitely does need some attention. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it gracious. does. It needs a little special attention from <laughs> your boy. <laughs> So I walk Amy into the house and I grab the first aid kit. I pause for a second and ask her if she's okay with me helping her with this or if she wants to do it herself because of where the uh, the cut is. If you catch my drift. Where's the cut, John? Uh, on a booby. Booby. Wow, God, this is this was most this is the most like, like sophomoric episode it's ever. It's just like dumb, dumb young bro energy we've we've ever That's what we are. exuded. <gasps> and she says, No, I trust you and I want your help. So we go into the bathroom. Oh, go you go this. into the bathroom. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> I look at it more closely to make sure it isn't more serious. I put some neosporin on it and I bandage it up nicely. Amy thinks thanks me and we go back outside a couple women come up to amy and ask if she's okay and one of them sarah gives me a dirty look and they kind of lead her away i go back to where i was sitting and greg sits next to me and he says yo uh some people are talking some shit out here about you what they talking i did my best to defend you but i figured you should know that they were talking shit about you helping amy wait the only guy like down to bandage up this lady and he's getting the shit what like let her bleed out let her die in peace you know what i mean just let it go like elsa let it go like elsa i asked him what he meant and he told me that sarah was saying that it was creepy how i quote sprung into action when i saw an opportunity to play with a boob end quote <laughs> Oh, man. What? And a few of the other women and one guy agreed and they were making fun of me. I was pretty upset about that, but I didn't want to make a scene. So I just ignored it for the time being. Yo, that's so whack. Later that day, I was sitting by the fire pit and Sarah was sitting across from me and nobody else was around the area. So I asked her why she was making fun of me for helping Amy. She said, well, I guess that was a little mean of me. Like, I'm sorry that I did did that but i thought it was kind of weird how you just saw her boob was hurt and then you ran up to her and insisted on helping i know you're in nursing school but i think you should let a girl he's literally handle it. in nursing school bro <laughs> he's literally being paid to do shit like this well sarah adds at the end uh we all know first aid too all then why you? didn't you spring into action huh i think Thanked her for her apology, and I don't like confrontation, so I just said, all right, I guess I'll keep that in mind from now on. So, Sam, there is an update, and I think we get a little bit more closure. But, is it uh, juicy? How, how it's, uh, I think it uh, might have a little a little juice, um, maybe a little milk. Um, <laughs> but how are you Let's feeling so squeeze. far? What, give me, give me what's, your, what's your assessment right now? How are you feeling? And let I me know, everyone, in the ridiculous. comments. I think it's ridiculous. I mean, like... Like, if Amy agreed to have him care for her, then that end of story, right? I think like, that's, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But I would love to hear the update. Like, what's actually going on here? That's right. I would also like to hear if anyone in the audience has, have, has ever had an injury on one of their more sensitive areas. Oh. And how that, was, how that was taken care of. So, I called Amy. Got some more info. I asked her how the cut was healing. She said that it was healing well and that she was keeping an eye on it. And then I asked her if she knew about the things that Sarah and the others had said about me and what Sarah had said at the fire pit. Turns out Amy had no idea. Hmm, curious. She said the other women were asking her if she was okay and what happened and all that, but she assumed they were just worried about the injury, not my helping her. And Amy was absolutely pissed and went to the friend group chat and tore the people that were talking shit a whole new booty hole, especially Sarah. 
good good because that's such a dick move to like yeah like like op was trying to do something nice and for the friend group to turn it into something weird is like not cool sarah and the others apologized to me in the group chat but amy kept going and said that i shouldn't accept their apologies because they sat back and talked shit on the one person who stepped up and helped her amy also asked greg not to invite sarah to the next pool party and greg readily agreed a few of the others tried to say that was too far but amy just told them to shut the F up and do something next time someone's hurt instead of sitting on their big old booties and insulting me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have two questions for everyone, Sam. Uh, I want all of you yeah. beautiful viewers of this. I want to know, do you think OP was the a-hole for, you know, <laughs> helping? And But I, B, maybe is is Amy being an a-hole here? Is is her retaliation her too much? Too much over the line. Uh, Sam, I will pass it to you. What do you what do you think here? What do you what do you think? Well, I think telling Sarah that what she did is not cool is important. Totally. Not inviting her maybe is a little bit too much because it like she's probably it, it, like I think Sarah, it seems like was just doing it as a joke. Yeah. Not being serious necessarily, but it is a like kind of a dick move. So I would say, hey, Sarah, that wasn't nice of you. You know, this person OP is doing something like actually kind what did you do and you know I, I i i want better behavior from you at the next pool party that's Ooh. that's kind of what i would i, I would approach it. i would i wouldn't like and not invite her forever yeah i feel like if i'm trying to empathize and put myself in uh amy's shoes it's it's not really that necessary to you know go that hard but maybe maybe also sarah is just kind of like not a good you know maybe sarah's cool just a dick friend. this is yeah, I mean, maybe yeah. this is like this is representative of other behavior. I got my useless assistant fired. I don't really care. I had to secure that bag. Am I the a-hole? So I know how this sounds, but please read before you judge. Too late, OP. Too late. We judge, then read, and then we judge again. Yeah. I, 30 male, worked at my current employer for the last three years. Last year, March of 2020, I received a promotion to project manager. In the beginning, everything went well, but in the last month, I've been getting more and more negative feedback. I did not understand what was going on or why people were becoming so negative about me. I'm losing clients and several colleagues were really upset with me. Why? Well, is, is there something going around the water cooler? I started talking to my manager and my department head about following courses, getting monthly feedback to perform better. I just wanted to live up to the promotion I received. I felt like I was failing. Then a friend slash colleague, 27 female of mine, came to me angry and demanded that I apologize for what I said. I was really confused. What did OP say? Say. and asked why she was so upset with me. She explained that she received an email where I was basically blaming her for the issues that I was dealing with. I was at a loss and I explained that I never sent out that email and asked if she could show me. We're like Scooby doing this. Like what's, yeah. what's going on here? Well, she did it and it had my name, my send address and everything seemed like the email was for me, but I never sent it. Then it clicked with me. My assistant 39 female has access to my email and has the ability to send emails as me but why what's the motive she's also the only one that has those rights i was flabbergasted and so much started to make sense she was next in line for my job and did not receive the promotion oh and so she's trying to sabotage I checked all her sent mail on her PC when she was out for lunch and saw dozens of emails sent as if it was me. Yeah, you're ruining relationships with these people. That's Jeez. terrible. An email still open on her screen showed my email address and a written message to clients with misinformation, passive aggressiveness, and straight up lies. These were sent out under my name. Oh my God. God. I took screenshots and sent them to myself, then went to my manager and the head of my department. They were pissed. I mean, I can't imagine. Why wouldn't you be? 
She was fired that same day. I was relieved and all of my colleagues were informed. I thought I was completely in the right here, but some people at work are complaining that I violated company policy for snooping on her PC and violating her privacy. Wait, what? Her privacy was violated. My boss and direct colleagues have my back, but the people that knew her, she has worked here since 2011 and I've only been here since 2018, say that I went too far. Are. Apparently, she's a single mother with two kids and needed this job. Well, maybe she shouldn't have tried to sabotage you. I also need this job, and she was more than willing to sacrifice me for her benefit. I don't see how I could be in the wrong for defending myself. Maybe I'm just too close to the situation. Did I go too far by going on her PC? There is an update, but Sam, ladies and gentlemen watching, what do we think? I mean, going on someone else's computer is like kind Generally of Generally not great, yeah. Like, I think he had enough evidence with the email that was sent from her already. Obviously, the assistant is the a-hole, but I think OP is a little bit of the a-hole for snooping. They just let me know that they're holding a meeting to clarify what exactly happened. They were catching on to the people that weren't happy about her being fired, and they want to resolve any issues before they start taking root. I'll update once the meeting is over. Update number two. Meeting took about an hour and a half, and after that, I was in and out of talks with colleagues and other people. It was poorly explained what she was doing and has done to me and the company. The attitude towards me noticeably changed in a positive direction with a lot of people apologizing to me and explaining they've known her for years, were friends with her, and could not imagine she actually did something like this. Honestly, I'm happy it ended this way. HR and my boss really had my back here and preemptively handled to avoid any lingering negative activity. Nothing but praise for them. I've requested some time off, which was approved, and I'll be home for a week starting next week. Per my request, slash advice, they're going to revise or at least look at the company policy regarding access to other people's emails and other security issues that I've noticed. It'll probably be the last update for now. I might make an update post if anything else significant happens. Thank you all again. Well, I'm glad it kind of all worked out for OP. Yeah, OP definitely deserved to be basically have their name cleared. I just found out my boyfriend is married and now I'm pregnant, so I'm, I'm going, going to, to ruin, ruin his life. life. A little tit for tat. Hey, that, that's what we need more in this world. Tits. So I know how the title sounds, but hear me out. I, 26 female, started dating my now boyfriend, 35 male. We have been dating for seven months. A month ago, he told me that he had to talk to me about something important. I honestly thought maybe he wanted to break up with me, but what he said was so much worse. It always is. My boyfriend sat me down and said that there was a problem. The problem being he's falling in love with me. When he said that, I was so confused. Huh? I didn't understand what the problem was. We don't understand either. I asked him why that was a problem. And that's when he told me that he's actually married and has been divorced. I wonder why. And that he lied about his age. He's actually 42, seven years older. That's old as fuck. Hey, you want to date a 42 year old right now? I mean, uh oh. <laughs> I sat there shocked. I didn't know what to say. When I finally came out of the shock, I grabbed my stuff and told them, never call or text me ever again. Get out. Take your walker with you. He tried saying what most cheaters do, that I was different. His wife and him hadn't been happy in a really long time and was considering divorce. Considering divorce ain't divorce, is it though? Divorce, babe, divorce. Why don't you consider it before you engage in the relationship? I still grabbed my stuff and left and I I didn't think twice about it. There we go. Good for you, OP. You got some standards. Go off, queen. Yes. The problem came about two weeks ago. My period was two months late. <laughs> two months. Uh, ladies, I would love to know, when do you get worried about when your lateness mm. is? I wasn't worried because I am extremely irregular. Okay. But after being late for a second month, I decided to take a EPT, which is an emergency pregnancy test. And it was positive. Oh. I thought maybe it was a false positive and took six more tests. <laughs> Damn, that's Run expensive, it bro. Pregnancy tests are like 50 bucks. Run it back. And they were all positive. Don't ask me why I know that pregnancy tests are 50 
50 bucks. <laughs> I was so upset. I cried out of shock and anger because of the situation as a whole. I called my now ex-boyfriend and he didn't respond. I texted him telling him we need to talk and radio silence. Mm. After days of calling and texting, he finally answered the phone and asked if I was pregnant. He didn't think it was his and he said to stop texting and calling and hung up. What happened to all this? Oh, I, I, I want to be together. To I'm life. so in love with you. <laughs> Stop it. I was livid. How dare he? I wasn't the one lying and cheating. Now being pregnant, I would have to explain to my family the real reason I broke up with him and tell them I'm pregnant. Fast forward to Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Hopi. <laughs> My family and I went out to dinner Saturday night to celebrate. I'm about 12 weeks along in my pregnancy and have to pee all the time. As I was walking to the bathroom, I saw my lying, cheating hooker of an ex, and he was there with his family and friends, and based on his body language, his wife. Ooh, here we go. Cooking up something good in the kitchen. Yep. I was so hurt and angry about everything, rightfully so, OP. I didn't think before acting. I went to their table. Oh, no. I'm loving this. I introduced this. myself. I told everyone at the table what happened from start to finish. Oh, oh, showed them pictures of oh. us together and text. And as a final note, I announced my pregnancy before leaving the table. And I grabbed his drink and I threw it at him. I <laughs> love it. Yo, that is wow. fucking heat. That is fucking heat, OP. I hope he's rich, and I hope the child support is oodles and oodles. Yeah. I then looked over at his wife, oh, and she was bawling. I felt bad, but I was so hurt and angry. So, did I take it too far? Am I the a-hole? Should I have done things differently? And there is an update, John. There is an update. <laughs> But please tell me in the comments, would you have taken it like, would you have taken it as far as OP? Also, would you even have thought to do that? Because that was chef's kiss. Well yeah, orchestrated. Well done. Um, tell me what you would do in this situation. If you saw your cheating, lying, dirty whore of an ex and I guess baby daddy, daddy, daddy in a restaurant with his wife, what would you do? But John, what would you do before we get into this update? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I would have done that, but I, I, I'm here for it. Honestly. Hey, but honestly, like if you, you could also think about it, like she's doing a service to this, this woman too. She is. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, Oh, like, you know, why would you make the wife cry like that? The husband, the yeah. husband the is husband the reason why that. all this yeah. happened. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So his wife reached out to me and wanted to meet up. I met up with her because I felt like it was the least I could do after everything that happened. She thanked me for everything. Everything I did and said. She let me know she filed for divorce. She had enough of the lies and the cheating. Mm. I was one of many over the time with their marriage. She told me I was the first woman to actually present pictures of pregnancy tests and ultrasound and felt I was being genuine about what happened. I apologized saying I never wanted to embarrass her. I was just so angry and I saw red. I told her if I had known he was married, I would have never dated him. She told me not to worry and believe me, especially with what I did when I saw him. She apologized to me for everything he did. This woman is a freaking saint and deserves better. We cried about everything we've been through mm. and comforted each other through the mess he created. I felt so much better having a heart to heart with her and wish her the best. It was oh. no surprise that he came looking for me, begging me to forgive him. Because now he lost his wife. He's like, all right, I guess I got I, I got to go to the mistress oh my that's gosh. carrying my freaking child. <laughs> I told him to get lost and I never wanted to see him again, especially after saying the baby was not his. I wasn't surprised he tried to come back, especially after his wife filed for divorce. When it comes to the baby, there is also an update. Oh. After a lot of thinking, I have decided to keep my baby. Unfortunately, I was having some issues with bleeding due to the fetus not being fully attached properly to my uterine wall. After being on bed rest this past week, bleeding got worse and I lost my baby. Yeah. After having this miscarriage, it's been a very difficult time. I know everything happens for a reason, but it really hurts. I have a lot of guilt surrounding the miscarriage because I wanted an abortion, so I partially blame myself. Don't do that, OP. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't deserve that. So now I'm just taking some time to heal and grieve my baby. Thank you for all the advice and the comments. Holy sh**. That was a doozy. Yeah. Yeah, let us know what you would have done in this situation. Please. Um, would you have taken back this cheating ex that is your baby daddy? Would you have done anything differently? Put your answers in the comments. John, one final verdict. 
Yes. Uh, I do not think OP is the a-hole, you know, and and even more so after hearing in the update how like the the now ex-wife, you know, came to her and they were able to kind of like basically support each other in this moment, which 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 was actually great to see. So obviously, obviously the the boyfriend ex, whatever, like just clearly the a-hole. So bad. Oh, the pretty much the only a-hole in this whole story which is sure. rare which, which is rare which is rare only one a-hole my psycho sister is obsessed with my boyfriend i think she might try to steal him from me what do i do get a uglier boyfriend so i female 23 have been dating my current boyfriend male 28 for four months and i'm totally smitten he's an old man my boyfriend is the sweetest, smartest, kindest, most caring guy I have ever met, and I feel so lucky to have found him. We met at the start of the new semester at our university. He's a graduate student that was running a tutoring group that I joined. I'm a senior getting my bachelor's. We hit it off immediately and found out that we had a ton in common, including the same hometown. Nice. We even went to the same high school, although we never met previously. Yeah, because you're Makes a sense, baby. He's old as fuck. He graduated the year before I started my freshman year, but he was in the same grade as my sister. I asked if he knew her and he said yes. How well did you know her? <laughs> oh God. But they hadn't kept in touch since graduation. We spent the last four months growing super close and we were talking about maybe bringing each other to our family holiday celebration. We didn't get to do Thanksgiving, but we decided to do Christmas together and I was so excited. I hadn't told my parents or sister I was seeing anyone, so I decided to call them and let them know to make sure that it wasn't an issue if he came to our Christmas celebration this year. Ooh, a boy's coming over for Christmas. That's, 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 big, that's big news bears. My mom was super excited for me when I told her all about my boyfriend and my dad said he sounded like a nice young man and he oh, would be glad to be middle-aged man a little uh, a, middle, a nice yeah. middle-aged man 28 yeah. one foot in the grave come on i then called my sister and i told her the news and even joked that it would be a little high school reunion for her she was initially very excited to meet my new boyfriend but when i told her who it was uh -oh. her mood changed dramatically uh-oh i think there's some history. She told me she would not be comfortable having a stranger at her family's Christmas. He ain't no stranger. He ain't no stranger for sure. And my sister said that she was sorry, but he can't come. I think he can inside of me. I was a bit shocked and asked her to explain because she's very outgoing and never had a problem with strangers before. This isn't the first boyfriend that one of us has brought home for the holidays. I asked if she had not liked him in high school or something, and that's why she didn't want him to come. She said no and that she i mean barely even remembered him like who is he like who is he oh my god all i remember like, is how ginormous his heart was i asked if she would feel better meeting him before christmas so it's not overwhelming on the actual holiday she got really firm and told me that she didn't want to meet him before during or after christmas and to drop it and then she hung up on me I mean, she's going to have to meet him eventually if it keeps going, right? That is so true. So what are we going to do? Like, just never me. meet this dude? Come on. Never, yeah. At the wedding, she'll just be like sitting at home. Just uh, like, ew, no, I don't want to talk to you. <sighs> He's still a stranger to me. I haven't met him before. <laughs> I hate strangers. She texted me a little later that it was rude of me to keep trying to force her to meet someone she doesn't want to and hopes I won't bring it up again. This makes no sense. Bro, it's her boyfriend. Like... If if it goes anywhere, she's get, they're going to have to meet. Yeah, it's just, God, this makes no sense. I asked my mom about it, but she's just as confused as I am and said she would talk to her for me. I obviously won't bring it up to my boyfriend if it makes my sister uncomfortable. I just wish that she would give me a good reason, especially since she basically said she never wants to meet him. I am just so confused. Am I the a-hole? I talked to my boyfriend last night and he also seems confused. I asked him to please be honest with me and to let me know if anything 
anything went on between them just running in the same circles. He told me no, and they had only ever hung out in groups. She was really more of a friend of a friend, and he had a long-term girlfriend he committed to throughout high school, so he didn't even hook up with her. She also never bullied him, and from his perspective, he never bullied her. He said that they always had a friendly slash civil relationship and never so much as got into an argument. He doesn't know what her issue is with him. There's obviously more to the story from my sister's side, so I have to try to speak to her again, possibly in a few days when I go home for the holidays. Sam, Tell there me there's is an update. update coming up. Oh, thank there God. is okay. an okay. update. Yes, thank God. All right, uh, my, my, I, my position stays the same. OP is not the a-hole, and the sister slept with OP's boyfriend. Yeah, because the boyfriend... Or had a boyfriend massive could... crush. Or had a massive crush. Because maybe the yeah. boyfriend actually is telling the truth, and she just had a massive crush that was like never reciprocated. I could see that being a thing, too. There's only one way to get to the bottom of that. Update! That night, I ended up messaging my sister's childhood best friend to see if she knew anything about my boyfriend. Oh, she's doing some investigative journalism now. I played it as, did you know my boyfriend in high school? Rather than, what the fuck is my sister's problem? Smart choice. Smart. She confirmed his name and then asked if my sister knew yet. Oh, oh, oh. we have, we've, we're starting to uh, get to we're the, to get, get to the X on the map. A red flag went up and I said, yes. And she doesn't seem happy. She then asked to call me. And a lot of you were right. My sister was obsessed with my boyfriend from seventh grade all the way up until they graduated and went to college in different states. Seven years of your childhood wow. too. I asked her if there was more to it than that because I can't believe my grown sister would act this way over a little crush. And she told me it wasn't a little crush. She was legit in love with him. Since she said in love, I asked if my boyfriend knew or if anything had happened between them. And she said that as far as she knew, he didn't know and they for sure had never hooked up to my sister's extreme displeasure. Oh, wow. So it's like basically OP has finally gotten what the sis always wanted. I, yeah, that must be what it is. You know, Yikes, that, sucks. that must be what it is. She pined for him for years and was devastated when he started dating one of their other friends freshman year. She oh, would no. show up to his work with other guys, only go to parties if she knew he was going, hooked up with his best friend to try to make him jealous, and once even tried to break him and his girlfriend up. Wow. Okay. OP sister is crazy. Yeah. She's a maniac. Full on, full on psycho. Whew. When my boyfriend and his then girlfriend did eventually break up senior year, my sister thought it was her big moment, but he never even gave her a second glance. Apparently, she still held a small torch for him all these years still, and her friend says she thinks that she would still want to be with him if he would have her, and she's probably just jealous. Oh, this is kind of crazy because you know the sister is going to be after this dude the whole relationship. That's the thing is like... That's what's crazy oh. like if th th this is like not a small obsession like now that this dude is in her life ah oh, dude i'm like i'm like worried for the the relationship i'm just worried for the relationship if the sister's like it sounds like the sister's gonna try to sabotage it i'm gonna try to talk to her one more time and let her know that i know about her crush and hopefully we could deal with this like adults my sister did end up calling me the next day and asked to come over to speak with me when she got to my parents she looked very sheepish and immediately apologized for acting crazy and shutting me down for bringing my boyfriend without talking to me first. A little more reasonable now. Okay. okay. She's probably just shocked, you know? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Still, though, still kind of crazy. Still kind of crazy. I thanked her for apologizing and asked her to explain her reasoning in her own words. My sister finally admitted her huge crush, and she just felt weird that the guy that she liked so much never noticed her, but noticed her little sister and just felt a little icky about the whole situation. She didn't want to be around him as it would make her feel like that desperate, insecure teenager all over again, and she was super embarrassed by her teenage self. Also, that makes sense. That makes sense. Better. I asked if she still had feelings for my boyfriend friend and she chuckled and said ah, 
<gasps> no. That ship has long sailed and she really truly is happy in her current relationship. Ah, so she's in a relationship. Okay, good. That's good. Her boyfriend also knows everything about the situation as she confided in him. She doesn't want to face my boyfriend knowing how intense her feelings were and she feels there's no way that he couldn't have noticed. I assured her he said that he has no bad memories of her and is interested in getting to know my sister with a clean slate. My sister said she would try to move past her discomfort and is looking forward to seeing us both at Christmas. So with that, my boyfriend did end up coming to Christmas and it was great. My sister gave him a bit of an awkward greeting and they didn't interact a ton, but we all played games together and my parents loved him. My boyfriend was super nice to my sister and he said that he didn't feel uncomfortable in the slightest. It was honestly so lovely and I feel like the awkwardness my sister is feeling will fade with time. She texted me after her and her boyfriend left that we made a great couple and she was again sorry for almost ruining my Christmas. I told her that I forgive her and I love her always. Wow. Okay, there so you go. It, it kind of all worked out. It all worked out. I that was worried though. Ending. I was worried they yeah. boned or I was worried that she was still going to be obsessed, but sounds like it, that wasn't the case. Totally. So I'm very curious for everyone, everyone listening here. What would you do? Your childhood crush that you, you know, obsessed over dates your sibling. Mm. You know, what do you, what do you do in that scenario? Also, how do you tell your crush? I mean, like, do you, like, what do people do like when, with crushes? Do you, like, like, do you tell your crush? I mean, I had like, you know, like I'm talking him like you know uh middle school actually probably huh. maybe only middle school but i guess i guess anyone you ask out is also someone well the crush a crush is kind of like a specific like yeah well specific and, like, yeah thing. i guess like anyone yeah anyone you ask out that's kind of basically like you had a crush and then you're like yo what's up yes but also it's like i feel like it's like like if you go up to someone uh you know at like you know uh a uh, house party at a bar or even like tinder that's not really mm. a crush because you haven't been able to like develop you know some sort of like you know right, knowing right. them a little yeah. bit but Even I, I, I like the idea. I think like, I like, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I do think though, one of the best ways to meet people is through friends or maybe through a friendship first. That um, is, yeah. I feel like house parties of friends that you parties. like really vibe with because all of their mutuals are going to, you know, yeah, it's have like, similar it's like a, taste. It's, it's a filter right there. It's a filter right exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I banned my homophobic grandma from my wedding. Now she's furious and still homophobic. Am I the... I'm getting married. And when I was on call with my grandmother, 75, she was super excited to come. And I was excited to have her there. I'm her oldest grandchild, so we have a special relationship. But a few days ago, she learned that my sister, my maid of honor, is gay. And I invited her girlfriend. She was furious about the gay thing and told me that either I uninvite the girlfriend or she doesn't come. And I immediately said that if that's the way she thinks, I don't want her there. You gave me the option, Granny. You can't. Can't be mad at me now. Now, my whole family is telling me to just uninvite the girlfriend and reinvite my grandma. Sounds bad, but I, my fiance, my sister, and her girlfriend live in one apartment now. They lost an apartment for 2020 reasons. And the girlfriend has basically been my roommate for six months now. I'm very close to her, closer than my granny actually, and I really want her there. My family's opinion is that I'm the a-hole. So there's a couple edits and an update, but before we get into that, John, what do you think? Is OP the a-hole or not? Nah? Bro, not at all. Even if you want to side with the hom homophobic grandma, which you shouldn't. This is OP's wedding. I'm Eastern European and homophobia is still very present here. That's why the family is okay with Granny's behavior, even though they love my sister and tolerate her girlfriend. It's all around them. And at two, I was never considering uninviting the girlfriend. The question is, am I the for uninviting grandma rather than letting her make the decision. And finally, the update. As many of you suggested, I told my sister and her girlfriend. My sister was mad that I didn't tell her sooner, but we ended up agreeing that grandma and one more relative actually are not invited and no way back. Turned out granny and especially the other relatives were bullying them on Facebook and other social media, but mostly Facebook, and were outing them online. Apparently both have been messaging my sister to verbally abuse her since she came out and she didn't want to tell me for the same reason I didn't tell her about the wedding stuff. So I'm no longer questioning who the here is. So I asked mods to stop the comments because my dumb has no idea how to do that. Thank you to everyone who believes my granny can change and I will keep trying with her after the wedding. 
Don't have to deal with the BS of having her at the wedding. And two, you can still try to work with her. You know what I mean? To, to try and get her over, like, to see reason and stop being homophobic. Stop being homophobic. This is a PSA from Sam and John. Yeah. Stop it. Look down. Look down at your genitals. Bam. Those are the genitals on screen. That's right. Embrace the genitals. Share your thoughts on this video. What would you do if you were an OP?